This is problem 145M, it's on page 46. A machine having a mass of 4200 kilograms is supported by three solid steel rods arranged as shown in figure P145. Each rod has a diameter of 20 millimeters. Compute the stress in each rod. Okay, so you should look at the picture. Um, I'm not going to draw it, but let's uh, write down what we've been given. 4,200 kilograms is the mass of the load. The rod diameters are both 20 millimeters. And look at the figure if you're, you're not already. What I'm going to do is take a free body diagram of just the point B. Because we know that there's tension in rod C, there's tension in rod A, and of course there's the weight of the machine. Uh, going down. Now I've intentionally drawn this this way because C is off at a more shallow angle from horizontal than A. A is closer to vertical. And of course the, the angles are given there. Uh, one's 35 degrees, the other one's 55. Anyway, um, so we want, essentially this is where the rod C is located. This is where rod A is located. And then uh, rod B is, is down here. Um, now I just realized that I did not calculate the stress in rod B and I think what I'll do is just leave that as an exercise for you. It's pretty straightforward. If there's a 20 millimeter rod here, all you need to do is calculate the weight caused by this mass. Okay, so multiply this by the acceleration of gravity. That's how much weight is pulling down on this rod. Calculate the diameter of the rod, divide the weight by the area, and that's the, the stress. Of course it's going to be a normal stress in that. So I'll leave that one to you. I'll work the other two. And that should be adequate. The first thing I did was I calculated the weight, in fact. I said the weight is mg, that's 4200 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared. So a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. And this comes out to 41,202 newtons, which is about uh, 41.2 kilonewtons. Okay, so if we sum forces in the x direction, well, of course, the weight doesn't have an x direction component. Only A and C have. A is pointing backwards if we were to use a, the usual right hand x up y type of coordinate system. Of course, Z would be coming out of the board, but most of our problems are planar. So TA has a component in the negative direction. So negative TA multiplied by sine of 35 degrees. I'll let you think about that and make sure you understand why it's sine of 35 degrees. It gives me the component of uh, the tension in rod A in the x direction plus TC, there's the rod going off to C, times sine of 55. Those don't look much like fives, they look like S's. Okay, now I'm just using my shorthand of S for sine and I'll use C for cosine. Anyway, the sum of the forces on B is zero in both the x and the y directions, and those are the only forces uh, in the x direction, so there we have it. Now, summing forces in the y direction, we'd have TA has a positive component. We want the cosine portion of that vector. TC has a positive component in this equation, since both are, are positive in the y direction and has a cosine of 55 degree component, but we can't set this equal to zero because there's one more force. There's the weight force, and it, it acts downwards. So there's all of the forces that sum to zero in the y direction. Okay, now I'd like to combine these two together. The way I did that is I solved for TC. It's pretty simple. TC is TA multiplied by sine of 35 degrees divided by sine of 55 degrees. So let's take that equation and we'll plug it in. Basically I'll just take this and plug it in right there for TC. And write again TA cosine 35 degrees plus TC which is TA sine 35 degrees over sine 55 degrees, don't forget then we have this piece, multiplied by cosine 55 degrees, um, and then I just said equals the weight, so I pulled the weight to the other side, 
in uh, rearranging that equation and plugging in. So then basically just solve for TA. TA notice is the only variable in the equation, so you just pull it out. And um, basically, let me do it a little slower than I worked it on my sheet. So this would be uh, cosine 35 degrees plus the other factor, which is sine 35 degrees divided by sine 55 degrees cosine 55 degrees and that's equal to the weight. <clears throat> Finally solving for TA. TA then is equal to the weight divided by all of this mess in the square brackets as a denominator. Cosine 35 degrees plus sine 35 degrees divided by sine 55 degrees cosine 55 degrees. There we go. Okay, now we know the weight. Cosine and sine is just a button on your calculator, so there's no point in belaboring this any further. This is about 33 and 3 quarters kilonewtons. So there's the tension in rod A. Uh, solving for the tension in rod C is pretty straightforward because we've got this equation over here that relates the tension in C to the tension in A. So I'm not going to write it again with all the numbers plugged in. Just realize the tension in A is 33.75. Plug that in here. Plug in the ratio of sine 35 over sine of 55 and you've got it. And what, it, what I got was about 26.63 kilonewtons. Now, when you're trying to follow my calculations and I get a number, a lot of times what I do is I use the previous results. The calculator has a whole lot more decimal places. So I may have, I don't remember, I may have left this in my calculator and then plug that in for the weight uh, over here. And that may be how I got this. So you may wonder, well, if he's using 41.2 kilonewtons for that weight, how did he get this number? Now, like I said, I don't remember exactly what I did. Uh, but frequently I'll do that. I'll use, I'll just leave a number with a whole lot of decimal places in my calculator and continue. And a, a lot of times, if you're careful the way you work it through, you can do that and just get one answer after another. So you should get an answer very close to this. Anyway, um, our general goal, though, is to calculate the normal stress, which will be a tension over area. So let's go ahead and calculate the area while we're here. Oh, by the way, this is another number we need. The area would be just pi d squared by 4. Of course, that's pi times, now 20 millimeters is the same thing as 0 0.02 meters. Has to be squared over 4. And that number is about 3.14159, which is just pi, by the way, times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. So there's the area. Now let me erase, because I'm running out of space here, erase this upper static stuff. And we're going to need that number, so I won't get rid of it yet. This was the tension in rod A. And so now let's calculate the stress. So the stress in rod A would be the tension in rod A divided by the cross-sectional area. So that's 33.75 kilonewtons divided by 3.14159 uh, times 10 to the negative fourth square meters. Now a newton per meter squared is the same thing as a pascal. And so when I plug this into my calculator, I got a number uh, that was on the order of, of uh, let's see, it would have been uh, 100,000 or so kilopascals. So basically what I did was I took out another 1,000 from this ratio. You can see it here. If we make this uh, to the negative first, then this would become an m for mega or for million. And you can see how since this is order uh, 0.1, then that's going to make this number go up by uh, a... Uh, uh, ma a magnitude. In fact, you could just basically take this decimal place, move it over one, get rid of the 10 to the negative 1, and so you've got about 300 by 3. That's about 100. So you expect about 100 megapascals from this. In fact, what I got was 107 or so point four megapascals. So there's the stress in A. That's over here on this side, on the left-hand side. 
Now, the stress in C is the tension in C divided by the area. Again, I'm not going to go through the details here. That number goes here. This number is going to go here again because both rods have the same cross section. Plug all of it into your calculator. Calculator, same uh, units considerations. If I can speak, units consideration, and there's the result for the stress in C. Now, the stress in C, that rod C is over here, and like I said, I forgot to work this one. I'll leave that one to you. But you should calculate the stress in the rod that's going down to the load itself.